Good afternoon, and at uh, this time I'd like to talk to you about the fingerboard lyre. Now, the lyre, as I said, it was played, it, it comes from ancient Greece and it goes even further back to the world of ancient Mesopotamia. And of course, there were the Anglo Saxons, Anglo Saxon, Viking, uh, early Germanic, and uh, Celtic lyres played in Europe. But, as time went on, some more novel forms appeared, and one of these is the fingerboard lyre. Now, I based this on an illustration of, uh, you know, for, in, from an illustration of a Bible prepared for the Frankish king Charles the Bald of 843. And it shows King David surrounded by his minstrels, and one of these is playing an instrument like this. It's a lyre, um, but it's only it's it's a lyre. You can see the showing you. It has the it has the two arms, of the rather shallow uh, sound box, but it's got a very elaborate. Carving, a very elaborate, almost gothic carving in the uh, around the sort of like uh, what was it? Yeah, it's not the peg box. Here, you know, the yoke, I suppose, and the you know, with this, you know, with these kind of fluid lights coming off, and this, you know, this cross piece here, and the and the arch. It's almost gothic, you know, like some of those in you know, in the later gothic carvings. You see, and uh, these bit here, I think they're. They're intended to look like something like a, ca a capital, you know, a pillar. Very elaborate, rather being very intricate, very beautiful instrument. And of course, we have the two side holes here. It only appears to have had three strings, and the minstrel is shown stopping them at different lengths with his fingers, which to my mind indicates that it was played something like a lute or guitar, rather than having uh, the fingers simply stopping the strings just to stop one string from sounding. But it's there, you know, intended so that you can get different tone, you different notes, different tones from a single string. Or at least that's how it appears to me. I mean, it, it, it may simply be that uh, they were simply stopping those strings at the time, but I don't think so. Now, the Romans did have forms of lute. They were called the Pandora. Uh, I think the name was taken over and altered, so it became the Mandora, and then the man and then gave rise to the mandolin. So there may have been an influence on it. Um, these forms of this form of purely plucked fingerboard lyre actually didn't last very long. I mean, you know, I don't think they were ever really popular. But lyres with arrangements like these came to be bowed. And in that sense, I think that they are the ancestor of uh, folk instruments like the Rosskreuz and the English crowd, which is show, which are shown on the 15th century, yeah, 15th century wall paintings at I think Warwick or Worcester Cathedral, somewhere. Now, fingerboard lyres themselves being have been played, you know, they've died out in the Middle Ages. As I said, I don't think they were ever really popular. Um, but, they, but the instrument sort of came back in the 19th century. Uh, sort of came back in the 19th, in the 19th century when uh, luthiers started experimenting with the form of the lyre and they tried to combine that with lutes and guitars so that you had instruments which were made very much patterns after the ancient Celtic lyres or ancient Greek lyres even the two arms and the yoke coming across and the strings coming down and then there was a fingerboard in front of it and these and these were known as the you know, the harp lute or the harp lute guitar and there were several makers of them I mean mostly in London 
and there were even there were even there were even sheet music produced for them in the in the 1830s. No way. This is a fingerboard lyre, from as reconstructed from the Bible of Charles the Bold. And I hope you've enjoyed my talk. Thanks very much.